So let's bring in Hollywood divorce attorney David Glass for more on this. David, people going through divorces are going through some of the hardest times of their lives, and a lot of what they're going through is emotional. And in any divorce, there's a huge sense of loss, and the loss of relationship, of money, some friends. Did you know that more than 50% of all marriages end in divorce? Staggering statistic, to be sure. Divorce is arguably one of the most difficult of all life's major transitions. When it comes to divorce, over the past 25 years, I've seen it all. Whether you're thinking about or preparing for divorce, in the midst of one, or trying to move on from one, our show is for you. Welcome to The Hourglass, where family law and psychology intersect. I'm your host, celebrity divorce attorney David Glass, a certified family law specialist, former psychologist, and the author of Moving On, Redesigning Your Emotional, Financial, and Social Life After Divorce. My show is devoted to bringing insight, clarity, and comfort to those who are about to go through divorce, those who are in the middle of one or trying to come out the other side of one. First on our show is renowned health psychologist Gretchen Kubaki, founder of PCOS Wellness, author of The PCOS Mood Cure, Your Guide to Ending the Emotional Roller Coaster. Dr. Kubaki has also written Moving Through Grief, Proven Techniques for Finding Your Way After Any Loss. Dr. Kubaki, I think it's fitting to start by helping our listeners begin to address how we handle the grief associated with divorce. Let's start with what to do about those initial feelings of tremendous loss, whether your divorce is civil or not. Yeah, any divorce is going to be full of grief at a variety of stages and points in the divorce process, whether it is the contemplation of the divorce, going through the actual divorce proceedings, or when it's over, because it's not really over. You have to work through the grief. And uh, in your book, you talk about four different stages of grief. How do they apply to the divorcing person? Sure. Most of us are familiar with the stages of grief as they apply to death. So we talk about denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. In uh, divorce, I look at it more as a compressed sort of thing. It can take any amount of time. Could be You could reach a point where you are over it completely. You've done your grieving before you even get to the point of sitting down with a lawyer to talk about the divorce. But for most people, it's going to come in terms of kind of a a pre-grieving sort of thing where you are thinking, wow, this means a lot of loss. My life is going to radically change. May also have a little glimmer of hope that life is going to change for the better. Then when you start the process of divorcing, you will go through some of the things where you're sort of numb and just dealing with the practical realities of life. You know, who gets the kids to school? How are we going to handle bank accounts? Who gets to keep the house? Mm -hmm. Those sorts of things. Not so much the emotional stuff because you have to tamp down the emotional part in order to keep going through the process. Third stage would be actually getting into reorganizing your life, thinking about what you want it to look like after the divorce and deciding what does my optimal life look like. Along the way, there's going to be a lot of tears for the time that was lost. And then finally, we have moving into this period of regeneration, reactivation, re-engagement fully with life, and really some little bits and pieces of the grief will still pop through even when you're excited about getting to go out and live your new life. But it's a process and it takes time. Absolutely. I, you know, when I went through my divorce, Uh, I had come to the realization this has to end. Mm -hmm. I'd set it all up. I sat down with my then wife and we agreed very quickly what we were gonna do. And I didn't start feeling sad about it until the first night I was alone in the house without the kids. Mm -hmm. I suddenly looked around and and, and said, what's going on here? Yeah, there can be some real shock associated with it, even if you're the one who initiated the divorce. It's that realization, whoa, this is real. This is happening. I am going to be a single person again. My life will be very much different than it has been as a married person. Yeah. I'm most interested in the fourth stage, the the sort of moving on. Mm -hmm. What kinds of tips and techniques can you offer to people once they get through some of these stages and get ready to move on with the rest of their life? Sure. Moving on, I think, is important to look at in a context of what are your values in life? What do you actually want to be doing with the time that you have left on this planet? So it might be values around family, religion, creativity, the environment, education, financial well-being, any of those things that may have been affected by your divorce or things that you may have set aside in the interests of the marriage. 
It's now time to tend to those things, to create goals that are associated with the values that you personally hold, not the ones you held as a couple, right. but your own goals, and to start setting up goals and deadlines to meet those goals so that you can feel like you're actively moving forward and that you have got a life that you really love so that you're fully engaged in that. You know, a big topic on the hourglass is time mm -hmm. and how people are affected by time, how they manage their time. Is there any specific amount of time that the grieving process should take for someone getting divorced, or is it person to person, case by case? It's really person to person, case by case. When we look at grief, a lot of times we talk about a one year process. So we're going through all of the experiences of a year, the cycles of holidays, anniversaries, birthdays, Father's Day, Mother's Day, that sort of thing as markers where different little bits of grief may arise in those moments, missing the person, even if you hate them at that point. Yeah. Um, there is really no set time. I think it's appropriate to seek counseling if you are right. going beyond a couple of years in terms of feeling really grieving to the point that you're depressed. Um, and that is something though where you can take your time you can try to rush through it, but the feelings are still going to come up when the feelings come up. So know that it is a process. It's also, like any other form of grief, it's a nonlinear process. We'd like to think that it's straight through. You go from the bottom up to the top. It's really more like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not what you want to think that it is. Sure. And um, do people sometimes get stuck in different, different stages and they just can't seem to move on? Yes, people do definitely get stuck in different stages. Denial is one of the stages where people may get stuck. And the longer the marriage is, the likelier they are to be stuck in a bit of denial, especially if they were in a marriage that was low on communication and they simply didn't talk about it. And then all of a sudden we've been married for 30 years and now we're getting divorced. Right. That is a good, uh, is a place where people often get stuck. The anger is also something where there can be a lot mm -hmm. of stuckness especially if it's multi-layered, if there was infidelity that was involved or some sort of financial betrayal or um, that sort of thing. It can lead to a lot of, of repressed anger popping out, things where the person had to just deal with things as they were. Yeah. And now, 5, 10, 20 years later, wow, are they angry. So depression also can be a stuck point, but I would say it is less so of yeah. a stuck point. Yeah. And um, if you were advising someone who's stuck at any of those points, and, and the advice is probably going to be, you've got to get into therapy. Oh. <laughs> what, what, do you have any advice on how to find a good therapist for you, for that person? Yes. Uh, when you're looking for a good therapist, you want to look for somebody who has expertise in grief, if that is what you think you are most dealing with. And any loss of a significant relationship is going to produce grief. Um, looking for somebody that you can get on the phone for a few minutes, talk to them, see if you feel comfortable with them. Yeah. Credentials are less important in terms of, do they have certificates? Of course you want somebody with a license, right. but you're more looking for somebody who seems to have some sort of an understanding of the fact that your grief is real. And even if horrible things happened in the marriage, you might still be grieving the marriage. You might be grieving the person you were, the time that you lost or many other things. So finding that person, you wanna go online and, and look, put in some search terms that seem relevant. So something like psychologist, grief therapy, divorce therapy, marriage therapy. So people who are trained in marriage and family therapy may be good choices aside from a psychologist like me because they have specific training in the family systems issues that are relevant to divorce. Now, Gretchen, do you have any sort of tips or techniques for people to move through the process aside from uh, the obvious advice of going to a therapist? Yes, a couple of things. And these are specific to anger and these are kind of fun also. Mm -hmm. I give you permission to have all of the anger right. and to really let it out, but choose to let it out in a safe way. Do something fun with it where you might end up actually laughing or giggling mm -hmm. or saying, I can't believe I just did that. It is great to go to something like one of the safe sanctioned axe throwing places in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and imagine your ex on the other side of it, or your soon-to-be ex on the other side of it. Uh, there are some places that do that sort of thing where you break dishes, and it's so satisfying to right. write the name of the person you're angry with and then shatter that plate, right? right. Uh, also, you could do something like if you are feeling sorrowful, then writing a letter to whomever needs to hear this. It's an unsent letter though, so feel free to use all of the expletives, blame, don't worry about writing it, clearly, succinctly, right. with proper punctuation, just spew everything out. Right. And that'll really help. And then you can burn it up or lock it in a box or whatever you wanna do with it, but get it out of your body and it will help you move forward emotionally. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what something I did. I wrote a letter uh, and then I had a little ceremony where I burned mm -hmm. it and just let it go. And mm -hmm. it was very meaningful to me. Yeah, there's something really cathartic about burning the written material. It's yeah. literally, we have the symbolism in our minds about endings of things happening when there is fire. Yeah. But fire also always comes with it rebirth, right? We think of the phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah. Also thinking of the fact that when a forest burns down, that clearing makes space for new growth, new beauty yeah. comes out of that. Absolutely. You've brought up so many topics, so many <laughs> points that I think are gonna be very helpful to our audience. Uh, I've gotta have you back uh, in the future to go more in depth on some of these things, but thanks so much for coming on with us today. Thanks so much, I appreciate the opportunity.